Hey everyone, welcome back to Avenue with Genghis. I'm going to do uh, part two of the beginner series today. So I'm going to go over monarch talent tree and culture. And then the next two videos, depending on what comes out with Ebony, like, you know, if there's anything important to release, I'm going to do two super important ones, layering and stamina. So I've done a stamina one before if you want to check it out, but I'm going to do it updated. There is new things and it just came to mind because Yemers, you know, always people asking for stamina. So why not just do a guide for them? Because as much as you want to give people and help people with stamina, it's just a never ending thing if they don't actually learn how to acquire stamina. So let's get right to it. And please remember, if you do buy packs to get your gems, spend responsibly, use the Amazon App Store. All the information is in the description to my video, how to download, how to use it. Save 20% on all your purchases. So, cultures. Uh, what culture should you choose? So there's different phases of the game and what you would want to do with that. And when you choose a culture, it affects your top sub, right? So your sub will change. And subs obviously have different skills, right? So if I click on mine, like... Japanese, it has attacking and research factory, which is kind of useless. And then these are the same for everyone, every single culture. So they don't really matter. But the culture up here, uh, not in the right place there, right here on the city. So when I first started the game, I remember I chose uh, Korea because Ebony Age 1, Korea, archers were so dominant. Archer attack, archer, archer towers on defense. And I was like, you know what? I didn't know you could change. And I was like, they have ranged troop attack. I'm, and wood, awesome. I need wood to make archers. I'm going to be the archer guy on server. And everyone's going to need me in their alliance because I'm going to have strong archers. And it obviously the game isn't like that. Obviously you could change culture all the time. So I didn't know that. And I stayed with it for a long time. But I believe Korea is probably the best culture for majority of the players for your first like year, year and a half in the game. It does help your archers, which is very important, but it gives you that gathering speed or extra bonus from gathering on the subsidies. But anyways, looking at them, you could kind of change them all and you should change them all. What's a couple gems? I was super cheap on changing them too. Like I'm not spending 2,000 gems and then 2,000 to change it again just for a building. But if you think about it, spending 4,000 gems to change your culture to get 15% extra... Uh, construction or research speed when you're talking about builds that are hundreds of days like that really helps especially early on because it's cheaper than using those gems for speed ups so anyways obviously europe helps with uh building speed china helps with in-city resource production which really you're not going to want very early on unless you have this on a farm account that bought bots uh because your resource fields are so low it really doesn't help you too much japan is for attacking you could change to that for svs korea as i said gathering and america is for science it will help you with your science russia sort of doesn't really help anymore because there's no defense in ebony so i wouldn't really even bother with this one too much uh and then arab we're going to get into this in a minute how it works with monarch talent so arab the important thing here the is well i guess if you get zeroed you could use it for healing on the sub but it's this the bonus from gathering five percent or bonus from offerings and what i'm talking about here is offering so if we look here at the prestige and experience every time you donate in the shrine you get five percent more if you're an arab culture and in the Monarch Talent, there's 20% you can do on level one by switching to offerings. And I'm going to talk about that. And look at this. So if I use this again, I'm going to... So we look, it's 190 plus 40,000. It's still 190 plus 40,000. Now it's 240 plus 40,000. And if I go all the way up to the max, I'll just do it. Like, why not, right? For the video. So I believe this will take me to my maximum amount. And yeah, so it's 540,000. So if I switch to Arab culture and offering, which I'm going to show you right now, that's 25% more. So instead of 500 prestige, I'd be getting 600. And instead of 40,000 experience, I'd be getting 50,000 monarch experience each time. So what I do is I change to Arab culture and my monarch talent once a month or once every two months and I do it all at the same time and then I get 600 every time so 
and 50,000. So that's super important if you're trying to push Monarch experience or prestige to move up the rankings, the rank rankings. And this is so important right here, rank ranking, to get more subs. You want to be Archduke. You want nine subs. Or you want to be Duke for 40, right? You want to get to that new level every time to unlock a different sub. And if you go into the details here, so you could see, right? Uh, March size capacity as well. That's big. But you'll see, like, uh, subordinate city capacity, six, and Duke has five, and Earl has four. So you want to go up, and you want to earn that all the time. Anyways, let's get to the Monarch talent, what I was talking about. So this is what I do. This is my everyday Monarch talent. 99% of the time, I am here. So I have March speed on, mortality. This will make it so that only 5% of my troops maximum die or get wounded on a monster. So if I send 100,000 troops at a monster, maximum only 5,000 can be wounded. Now, if I send a million, only 50,000 can be wounded. If I don't have this on, I could come back with like 120,000 wounded. So it's super important. Archer tower, kinda doesn't matter too much. They don't really help out much. Healing cost, this is probably the most important thing in here in the talent other than the pvp stuff which i'll get to i'm going to show you the difference between having this on and not it is massive resource plunder not that important but the reason why you have it on is so you can reach over here because you can only move one slot over and get the subordinate city attack so four percent times each subsidy i have nine that's 36 percent more attack i get by having that on that helps with monsters it helps with pvp training speed you're always making troops hospital capacity this rose 30 isn't really too uh important so 26 you could go gathering boost if you you know farm when you sleep that sort of stuff or when you go to work in city hp that's pretty important and then subordinacy this is the same as the attack two percent per sub so i'm getting 18 percent more hp in city attack five percent pretty important and then subordinate city defense two percent times each so i'm getting 18 percent more defense on my troops uh you could do monster hunting i guess if you want that could help i'm sure and that's my every day Monarch talent. I leave it there 99% of the time. Now, when I do things such as research or uh, buildings or troop training or offering, I do it all on one day, like once a month, and then I change my talent. So this talent that I have now is done like 1% of the time right? And I'm going to walk you through it. So I have March speed. The only reason I don't have offering, I used to, is because my monarch talent is max. So it's just not worth it for me to move over and get those benefits. But if I did not have level 40 monarch experience, you, you got to believe I would have that on and I'd be pushing it to try and get it. Uh, now let's go back into it. So right here, I'm going to switch over. I won't hit confirm because gems are precious, but I would have this on and once a month I would move this over and change to Arab culture and then I'd do all my prestige at the same time. I would still do a few levels of gems, probably up to 1,000 gems. And then once it starts to cost 1,500 gems per, I'd stop and use all my tributes. Now, this one, uh, level two, or level six doesn't really matter too much the only reason i put it there is so that at the next level i can go to research speed and four percent and help out my research speed so when i'm going to do all my science i'm going to talk to whoever's king say i want scholar they're going to give it to me and then i'm going to change my culture to american and then i'm going to put this talent on and i'm going to do all my science on one day that way you're not changing and using gems all the time this next one troop load this is where I'm going to, you know, if, if I'm going to be, if family members are going to be donating to me and I'm going to be picking up a lot of resources, why not switch to this and pick it up a little bit faster? And then here we have resources plunder. Again, not important. The only important thing is that I switch to here at level two. I want to have resource critical. So this stuff, if I have this on, I'm actually going to switch over right now because there's... Uh, an experiment I'm going to show you. So now I switched over. So if I have this on, what this means is, on re so I only open my inventory when I have this. And let's say you're starting a new account. I wouldn't even open 
any in resource in inventory until you get your monarch level up to that um, high level. So if you're creating an alt and it's only like monarch talent 20 or 15 and doesn't have that level yet, don't open them. Wait, because you're losing out. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. So we look here and I'm going to open up uh, 117 million stone, right? But I get that 10% bonus. See, I opened up 130 million. So I actually got a little bit extra there. Now, let's look at uh, training speed. I'm going to train all my troops once a week or every two weeks on training day, and I'm going to increase the speed 10%. Troop upkeep, this will help me store more food, right? So my troops won't eat it. This one, training capacity, a lot of people don't know this, but if you raise your training capacity, it actually raises the training speed as well because the training speed is based off of one troop, right? And that gets multiplied by 50,000. So if it's just one second difference and then 2,000 more of a cap, it'll get multiplied a little bit and those fractions of a second will multiply a little differently and speed up your troops. Here, attacking survival isn't too important. The important thing is to get over here on siege machine repair. So if, if you ever end up in an accidental situation where you have to repair a lot of siege, have this on, it'll save you 6% gems and it's actually really significant. And then troop revival, you, have, you should have this on after SVS all the time when you're going to revive your troops and you'll get 10% more uh, source of life usage. And what I'm talking about is here, right? So I'll be able to heal 10% more troops. Now, what I wanted to show you guys was this. So let's take a look. This is the maximum amount of troops I can heal. It's going to cost me 140 million food, 127 million stone, 337 million food, 16 million ore, 14 million gold. Or is it? See, there's not much you can do to reduce the cost of healing uh, healing your troops. There's only two things you can do. So 20% might not seem like much, but it actually really is. So if you go down here on the defensive tab and you look at medicine, reduce the cost of healing, 70%. So you maximize that and that's really all you can do. So accept the talent. So remember those numbers that we just did? So 20% reduce. So I'm going to switch back here and now let's go and take a look. Actually, you know what? I'll take a little screenshot here there and we'll take a screenshot of revival troops so I'm gonna switch off of both of those and let's see the difference it's significant so let's go over to revival and you can see only 217,000 and it was 224 so you're getting more bang for your buck if you have that monarch talent on now let's look at the heal this one's huge 140 million 127 14 373 16 look at this wow massive difference and not only is like so some of it stayed the same but that's because that it went to so let's look at this we'll delete this one so it's not in the way and we could just slide directly over look at the difference <clears throat> so the food stays the same because that's my maximum amount of food but i'm actually healing way more troops and then you look at the wood i'm healing way more troops and it's like half same with the stone and the ore and the gold half and look at how many more troops i'm going down like to t14 260,000 and on this one i was only at the horse and only able to do 9,000 so like this is so big this is actually one of the absolute most important things you can have for monarch talents on you should have it on every single day and that's it so that's it for this video i hope this really helps people i think it's one of those things that people just don't understand in the game they think that they pick a monarch talent and they leave it forever i used to think that too you could even look at some of my old videos and some of the stuff i didn't understand in the game and now i know a lot more but anyways 
Next ones coming out are going to be layering and stamina. So they're super important. Share them with your alliance mates. I actually, the reason I'm doing the layering one is it's just repetitive. I keep saying the same thing to the same people, different people all the time. Now I'm just going to say, here's a video, watch it. And you guys should do the same. So Genghis, like, subscribe, leave a comment.